you know, quite often we're still designing things as we enter the construction phase, whether that's the interiors or you know certain details on the shell. So it's very rare for a project to be completely designed before we break ground. You know, I think that's the designer's natural inclination just to continue to make things better, to improve things, refine them, and also capitalize on new opportunities. Sometimes you'll see something in the field during construction that presents a new opportunity, and you know, that's the case here. So one of the things that came up last time we were on site was this idea that we might be able to repurpose this mechanical space that was positioned above the master bath and next to the master bedroom into something that served the master bedroom space. So maybe it could become a reading loft, a place for books, could be sort of meditation space, could be sleeping loft even. So if we take this as our design challenge, we want to come up with several different solutions for this space. So we're going to be revising the plan for the master suite. This is the master bedroom. Great view out to the water. The dressing flanks that to the west. And then here to the south is the master bathroom. So you enter the master suite this way. If we turn on the second level plan here, you can see this appears solid because our mechanical space basically sits in here above the bath. And then this is vaulted space. So the roof flanks up like this. One of the things that we start to realize with this is that it's not a lot of space. If we look at the headroom here and in order to turn it into code compliant space that's habitable, there's a lot of different restrictions. And sometimes you run through these options just to show why something is not possible or why it's not optimal. And then you land at the result that you're ultimately looking to, to land at. So if we just talk about basic access to this space, you know, our primary job as architects is to protect the health, well-being, and safety of the building's occupants. So if we want to access this, the easiest and best way is to create a stair up along this face here. And obviously this is the only only face that we can do that because this is the place where we have headroom to land the stair. Now a stair has certain code minimum required treads and risers. There's minimums and maximums that we can't exceed, but roughly this is the pitch of that stair. And if we come back and we come to look at it in the plan, we'll turn the plan on again here, a stair that's code compliant would take up about that much room on the floor plan here and you can see it would be in front of the window and it would be hard to get to this side of the bed it would require some interior space planning that just this just doesn't seem to be sensible in this particular layout so what are our other options so another option would be to have a you know a 60 or a 70 degree say ship's ladder that would access offer us access up here once you do gain access you need a way to prevent people from falling off the edge here so you need a 42 inch high guardrail and that would have to sit in here and it could be sort of cables so it could be light and thin it could also be books so we could turn this into a piece of furniture this could be sort of floating bookcase here we could then have books all along this back wall here but you can see now if the idea is to create more spaciousness in the bedroom uh, we are maybe starting to subvert that notion by creating all these barriers here you know if we turn that into a wall of books and this is our ship's ladder then our ship's ladder actually would have to come up higher so we have handrails coming up but that's kind of less than desirable in terms of keeping it sort of open and airy and increasing the spaciousness it also as we come back to the floor plan let's look at that in plan so a ship's ladder is smaller for sure but it still takes up real estate in the room and is it necessarily very convenient for you to climb up that ladder in order to fill all of those shelves with our books and get furniture up there we need to carry this up our ship's ladder so <laughs> that seems less than ideal and by my client's own admission this actually becomes just another space to clean and maintain and you know without a stair which is easy to use it's probably going to be used more infrequently and so is this really the best use of this space so i came up with a few options presented to them i said if we want this to be accessible space these are probably the options we're considering and that kind of made way for what we actually kind of decided to do which was let's pull this wall in to this point because you know creating spaciousness up here can be accomplished in a couple of different ways so we can you know create the feeling and sense of volume in the space here so that this space continues on to a wall plane that's slightly further back 
in the view plane. And equally, we can bring this plane forward here. And when we do that, we're creating this alcove for books right out front here. Now, when I'm trying to design, you know, furniture, books, and things that I want to feel integrated, I want them to be a part of the architecture. And so we do that by kind of creating a place for them. And in this particular case, you can see that we're starting to create a place for the bookcases to be sh housed and sheltered. So there's kind of this little nook in here that we're creating. So we've got a shelf here and shelf here. And my preference in these cases is to do one large singular gesture rather than gestures that are broken up and sort of disparate, like we would have a bookcase here and a bookcase across the back wall. That feels more broken up and less successful to me. And then you can see here, we can start loading this up with our books all through here. You know, maybe there's some objects that are displayed in here as well. And all of this material is, is then at a, a location that really is accessible and becomes just a much more functional, not only display space, but also just a functional object in the room. And then the texture of that wall really becomes about the objects and the books that you're, you're placing on here, uh, rather than sort of subdividing and creating strange allocations in the space. Now I do think we probably want them to be kind of floating in the space. Now they could be on standards, they could be vertical standards, they could be this sort of Vitsui system, you know, the sort of uh, Dieter Rahm's designed shelving system. They could be racks shelving so that they could be adjustable and movable, but I think actually fixing them, finding a dimension and fixing them is gonna be the cleanest solution of all. And then what I wanna do is I wanna find a way of kind of lighting this face. It'd be nice if we had this kind of minimal fixture sitting at this edge here like a linear LED fixture and just kind of washes that face. Now we also need to probably uplight this space. Previously when we had a ceiling in here that guarded our entry, we just had a couple of recessed in there. It was this kind of very contrasty lighting scenario and I think we want to replicate what we were doing in the main volume of the space and use a couple of uplights. And for those, I think we can do couple of the BK lights that we had and those we just put like a wider spread on those spots and then we're going to use the ceiling plane as this kind of luminous object so we're going to have a couple of these aimable mono points and these are going to wash the ceiling plane like that and then we have task lighting at the bed behind for sort of individual reading. So I have ambient, accent, and task in here. If we look at this space right here, this shelf, this object that's allowing us sort of display space up here for art or objects, um, this space, if we take the sort of midpoint of this space, I'd like to come back and add in what I think will be one of the primary drivers of increasing spaciousness up here, and that is uh, another window. Let's select that, and let's add a little bit of glass in there. We can make that a little more opaque. So the window kind of sits in the wall in this kind of zone here. Now this window will let light in and illuminate this wall, as well as move throughout the space kind of from this zone here all the way over to this zone here throughout the day. With the design updated, we can now roll the changes back into the drawing set. So we're gonna hop over to the computer to do that. All right, so I'm here in AutoCAD and I don't care if you're using Revit or what you're using, MicroStation, uh, ArchiCAD, I couldn't care less. Um, this is what works for me. Please use what works for you. Um, I do this because I enjoy it and I enjoy drafting and having used Revit before, can't stand it. Okay, so rant over. First step is to save this out as uh, part of your archive. Okay, so I have my file set up here, construction documents, outpost CAD, and then we're gonna come into the archive and I'm just gonna name this pre-loft. Okay, so, you know, typically you'd, give it version one, version two, version three, but you know, when you end up with 15 versions, 
you may not remember what version 12 was. So all I'm doing here is sort of cataloging points in time. So pre when the screen porch was 12 by 12, we had a 10 by 10 version. So, you know, I'm just kind of naming these files um, as to the thing that we're changing and that kind of helps bookmark it. So you may have a different system, but this is just kind of how I do it. So, so that's my archive file, okay? And then I'm just gonna save this back uh, for working purposes here onto my desktop, but I'm just gonna save it as the base plan. Okay, so now we're ready to start making the changes. We're gonna shift this wall over first, and we want this whole alcove space, once we fill it with all the books that we're gonna load up in there, we just want it to feel like a continuation of the hallway wall. So even though we could just kind of slide the door over that 12 inches, if we extrude this entire wall face, it's gonna feel like the hallway wraps around the corner and it's gonna reinforce the architectural concept. It's gonna make it feel integrated and built in. Following that, we're gonna tune up all the dimensions and annotations, get everything all centered up, looking nice. Uh, we wanted to add references to other drawings, like the interior elevations here. With dimensions, the common practice is to dimension to all the framing members not the finished wall surfaces because the framing members come first. Uh, but there may be cases where you actually want to maintain or call out a finished dimension that's really important. And that's where we add the FIN note below our dimensions there. We're also going to add in the window in on the upper level and we're going to have to give that a horizontal dimension to locate it. The rule as you're drawing is to you know reference information just in one place. So the horizontal dimensions of this window, they definitely belong on the floor plan, not on the elevation, for example. We use the elevations to add our vertical dimensions. So exterior elevations will have vertical dimensions for our windows, where to mount those. Uh, interior elevations we'll get to in a minute. We also want to make generic references in these documents. So for example, you know, I know I want these shelves to be white oak, but in the plans, I'm just going to reference them as clear finished wood. And then I'm going to use the specifications to call out the wood type and the finish type. And this way, if we want to make a change in the future, let's say we want to update them to be maple as opposed to white oak, we only need to update that in one place. We don't need to go and find 10 different references on the drawings. So next, we're going to update the electrical plan. We just want to make sure we're going to archive the old drawing first, just as we did with the floor plans. And if you set this plan up as a reference, it should already be updated in the drawing when you open it. And then we just need to delete the old fixtures, add the new wall sconces and that linear wall light. And then we need to update the switching for those. And usually what I'll do is I'll go ahead and update the fixture schedule for the new light that we added. I'm gonna do that right now as well so I don't forget to do it. Next up would be the interior elevations. And I like to draw these at half inch equals a foot. I'm gonna update the drawing with all of our new shelves and our lighting. You'll notice that these vignettes, they're kind of bound by this bold outline and that's kind of the section cut. It's bound by a polyline. I'm using AutoCAD, so that gives it some thickness and that's just gonna follow the perimeter of the room. And if I cut through something like cabinetry, it's also gonna follow that perimeter as well. So here I'm cutting through the headboard and the shelves and the bed platform. And so you can see the section line goes through that. I like to use these solid shaded regions to create depth in the interior elevations, you know, using different tones of gray to kind of help it make it more clear. I'm going to shade sort of glazing, um, the windows, any materials, wall surfaces. And I use these in the same way we use exterior elevations to locate things vertically. We're going to locate things vertically here, design features that aren't captured or depicted anywhere else. And if your cabinetry, is really simple. This may actually take the place of cabinetry drawings. And for these shelves, we just need to reference a few details here so we can show how they're actually mounted on the wall. And the idea with all of these drawings is the deeper you go into the set, the more detailed the information becomes.